the subgrade is compacted and rolled just as it is for the base. The geosynthetic clay liner and geomembrane are then placed and must be anchored to prevent slipping down the slope. An aggregate drainage layer is not practical. Instead, a geosynthetic drainage layer is used. This is made up of a geonet, sandwiched between geotextiles. The geotextiles provide protection and filtration as they do on the base. The geonet performs the drainage function that would otherwise be performed by a drainage aggregate layer. Here the rolls of geomembrane are being welded together on a steep slope. Each roll of geomembrane is anchored at the top and the weld lines run directly down the slope. Here you can see the white GCLs have been rolled down the slope, overlapping at the edges. In the background to the right, you can see the black geomembrane being rolled out on top. For long slopes, a terrace may be needed to break the gradient. The terrace enables additional anchorage points. The anchor system must be carefully designed. Commonly, a trench is used. The top of the rolls are covered in the trench with compacted soil. The dead load and friction combine to resist pull-out forces. Alternatively, mechanical fastening systems may be used for anchorage. A geomembrane used in landfills is typically made from high-density polyethylene, HDPE. It is about 2 mm thick, comes in wide rolls and is welded together on site by specialised installers. After installation, testing of the welds ensure a continuous seal. Geomembranes can be punctured in several ways, from the stones below in the subgrade, from sharp objects within the waste, or from the heavy machinery used in the installation process. Selection of the geomembrane requires consideration of strength, chemical resistance, puncture resistance, working life, and frictional characteristics. Safe handling and transportation of geomembranes is critical. The rolls are very wide and heavy. They can be damaged during transportation. Specialised equipment is important for safe and efficient installation. After installation, adjacent rolls are welded together to form a leak-proof seal. On side slopes, textured geomembranes can be used to reduce slippage between the layers. The sequence of installation is important and can be different on every job. In this instance, the side slope lining system is in place while the base is still being prepared. The joining detail can be quite complex. Here we can see intersections between the base and side slopes and a corner of the landfill cell. The geomembrane is welded, not overlapped, so alignment is critical. Where a compacted clay layer is used under a geomembrane instead of a GCL, a geotextile may be used as a protection layer. Here we see the geotextile in grey, with the black geomembrane being rolled out on top. In this instance, the base is completed before the side slopes. Two layers of geotextile are used in the lining system. One is placed between the geomembrane and drainage layer. The second is placed on top of the drainage layer. The first layer protects the geomembrane from puncture. It is selected on strength to resist the drainage layer pushing into the geomembrane. The second layer provides a filter. It allows liquid to pass through the drainage layer while keeping waste material out. Fine-grained material would otherwise clog the drainage layer. The geotextile is selected on flow rate and strength. Non-woven geotextiles are preferred to woven geotextiles for these purposes. The geotextile completes the sealing layer. It neatly covers the entire surface of the landfill cell 
providing protection to the geomembrane and preventing it from puncture. A non-woven geotextile is used. Recall that it is manufactured using a needle punch process. For landfill protection, the product must be specified as needle free. Electromagnetic quality assurance scanning is used at the factory to ensure this. Otherwise, needles that have broken off during manufacturing could puncture the geomembrane. The geotextiles also protect the geomembrane from the heavy drainage layer as well as installation forces. The weight of the bulldozer is forcing rough edged aggregate down into the geomembrane. Here you can see geotextiles being rolled out on top of the aggregate drainage layer. The lighter grey geotextile rolls are covering the darker grey aggregate. A GCL is a clay sandwich. Bentonite clay is compressed between two layers of geotextile. The clay provides the sealing mechanism and the geotextiles provide the strength. Various grades of GCL are available. Stronger grades are better suited for side slopes. A 10mm thick GCL provides the same sealing capability as a 1m thick compacted clay layer. The GCL is rolled out on site. Adjacent rolls are overlapped, not welded. Naturally occurring clay has massive variation in properties. Clay used in GCL manufacture must be sourced at a consistent grade and quality assured by the supplier. The two geotextile layers are needled together, holding the clay in between in place. The geotextiles are manufactured with different properties, such as high shear strength for use in side slopes. Moisture content of the GCL must be carefully controlled. The rolls are transported with plastic covers to prevent the product from getting wet. Specialised installation equipment is used. Care must be taken on slopes to ensure the rolls do not run away. Adjacent rolls are overlapped and in some instances extra clay is hand placed to maximise sealing performance along the edges. Landfill drainage systems. Landfills inevitably collect liquids from rainfall and from within the waste. Liquid mixes with the decomposing waste to create a potentially hazardous leachate. Landfills are sealed at the base and side slopes. They act as a giant bathtub. The collected leachate must be drained. If the leachate is allowed to build up, it will elevate the temperature inside the landfill. It creates a soup in which the waste material is decomposing, releasing energy. The resultant heat will degrade the lining system and reduce its lifespan. You will have noticed in the previous section, sealing systems at the base and sides include a drainage layer. Leachate is captured in this layer and makes its way onto one or more sumps. The base is designed at an incline to enable this flow. The liner slopes into the leachate collection pipes at 3%. The pipes slope at 1% into the sump. The collected leachate is then extracted from the landfill. Where groundwater tables below the landfill are variable, underdrains may also be used. These reduce uplift forces on the liner. 